On show 490, lap records broken by batteries, EV towns in China, and electric police cars. Those stories and many more coming up on today's podcast. Morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world, welcome to the show. We call this EV News Daily, your edition for Monday, 3rd of June, start of the week. My name is Martin Lee, going through every EV story that I can find to save you time. Really looking forward to this weekend, 7th, 8th, 9th of June, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It is going to be fully charged live at Silverstone in the UK. You can get your tickets for all three days if you want to. Have a look online right now. Maybe just go for one of the days. Maybe go for a couple. It's Saturday, Sunday if you can't get Friday off work. I'll be there this weekend. Hey, a couple of suggestions about... I tried to organise a bit of a EV News Daily Patreon meetup, like a thank you thing, but there's so much going on at Fully Charged Live. Literally every second is accounted for. I was thinking, well, you know, could we do Saturday night? I'll maybe at the venue or a hotel nearby, but then there's live music on Saturday night. So Sunday, people will be getting off home. So you know what? Let's just have a posh coffee catch up. The way that when we launched Patreon, I used to say that uh, if you want to support a, a creator on Patreon, just think of it like it's one posh coffee that maybe you don't have this month but you know five bucks ten bucks uh, for a super posh coffee uh, you can support your favorite creators if anybody wants to have a super posh coffee catch up a fully charged live this weekend uh, just let me know bung me uh, i'm on twitter email all that kind of stuff and i'd love to hear from you and, and we can catch up let's arrange a, a good time when a bunch of listeners can uh, can just say hi to each other uh, and, and i can say thank you to you for listening uh, thank you as always to myev.com for helping make this show it is the world's first marketplace about buying and selling electric vehicles it is really when you think about it about people though i know it's about evs but it's about connecting people just like what will happen at fully charged this weekend it's about uh, not uh, wasting your time on other websites myev.com if you want to have a look at what that's all about in the usa so congratulations to team volkswagen motorsport on twitter they posted this 605.336 what is 605.336? Six minutes, five seconds, uh, 0.336. That is a new electric lap record by the Volkswagen IDR on the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Another milestone in electric motor in mobility. This thing sounds like a beast. Only thing that can keep up with it is a helicopter that you can hear here. Roman Dumas is the record-breaking driver. Took it up uh, Pike's Peak, now taking it around the Nürburgring, and was very happy afterwards. Yeah, it was a very good day. I mean, uh, we achieved what we wanted to have, the electric record. The car was very, very good, very nice to drive. Uh, we get quicker and quicker. And uh, I think uh, he sure improves that Volkswagen Motorsport again. Made a very good car, enjoy a lot driving the car here. Pushing also myself to the limit, so... I think it's a, it's a great future again with this car and we'll continue to push on it and to see what we can achieve next. Motor1.com said that Roman Dumas, a race car driver and Porsche factory driver, set the lap record in the IDR after setting the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb Record. That's the full title, uh, using the same car last year. However, for the Nürburgring, Volkswagen had to modify the vehicle to conquer the iconic track. Volkswagen kept the same time, the same twin motor, rather, and the battery setup used on Pikes Peak, but a lot of work on maximising downforce and acceleration to achieve its top speed f faster. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Volkswagen changed the energy management system as well. I'll put a link to motor1.com in the show notes if you want to read more and watch a really lovely 10-minute video they've linked into the top of their page. Just hit play and you can watch the whole thing, the whole six minutes, bit of before, bit of afters, lovely stuff. Let's talk Tesla. Tesla's version 3 superchargers uh, will begin rolling out. Oh, they have really begun rolling out actually in locations, uh, but they are going to prioritise a long distance travel according to an update that Elon Musk I mean look Elon talked about a lot on the Ride the Lightning podcast the hour long interview that Ryan did but that was one of the biggies actually uh, first generation superchargers which I don't really think about actually not being a Tesla owner and all those kind of things but the first gen I remember when they launched Supercharger V3 they were saying actually 
they won't replace old superchargers. They're gonna they're, they're gonna be new ones. But uh, he did say Tesla supercharger version one will be replaced as and where it needs to. Elon Musk explained that the company is trying to stay ahead of the demand curve and avoiding congestion, but not wasting money on building you know thirty stalls and no one ever uses them. It must be when you think about it, kind of an impossible task. Look, they have a ton of data that they'll be sitting on, no doubt. And how do you how do you legislate for holidays and National holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, people are going to be using those superchargers. But I guess what you have to think about is a, is a normal day-to-day run. Are those superchargers underused, overused, optimised, and all that kind of stuff? Well, Mercedes EQ brand is all about uh, launching a new brand for Mercedes. We've heard of the EQ. C, that's the first one. The EQB, yeah, that's going to be smaller. But now, what about the EQE aimed at rivaling the Tesla Model S? This is another one of those stories that's about a car that is not exactly on the market anytime soon. The recently launched EQC is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Mercedes' new EQ family of EVs. Uh, The three-pointed star has already previewed an entry-level car, the EQA compact hatchback, the people mover. Oh yeah, I forgot that one. It's called the EQV. V for van. And a pure electric version of the GLB compact SUV. That's what I was talking about with the EQB and the flagship EQS is on the agenda. But, says Motor1.com, what about an EQE? Well, according to Autocar today, it was mentioned in a document. It's been released by the Chinese Ministry of Information and Technology. It's been given a code name, V295. But the EQE will be shorter than the conventionally powered E-Class sedan offering space inside to a similar S-Class. Though I'll pop a link to Motor1 in the show notes if you want to read more. Let's talk Tesla Roadster. New images emerging from the design center in Hawthorne. Thorn, California, where the design magic takes place for Tesla vehicles, including the new upcoming Roadster and the Tesla semi truck or semi truck, says Eric Loveday for InsideEVs.com. Now, in a recent interview for uh, an interview of Powell, uh, Powell Pietric. Uh, Petrica is the creative manager of user interface design. That's a job title for you at Tesla, uh, done by the website called Work With Us. They released some new images of the Roadster, uh, one of the semi. Semi, uh, you decide which way that you want it said, uh, and the d- design team all lined up as well, and uh, it's great. It's like when you used to see, uh, I mean, Apple used to put out pictures of Joni Ive and his uh, design team uh, working on the industrial design at Apple, and it's nice. You see the the faces, people, the talent behind the design, the beautiful design of the things that we love to have in our lives. Now, let's talk batteries. Not car batteries, residential batteries. And a headline here that caught my attention, because it's one of the things that I've I've, thought about and thought, I wonder why this is. Let's find out. Residential batteries are five times more expensive than EV batteries. Residential batteries are a lot of money. So much so that I've sometimes thought it would be easier... (laughs) <laughs> if if I if I had a <laughs> an inch of talent, uh, uh, but it would be easier to buy an old Nissan Leaf, like an original one, twenty four kilowatt hour battery. Could you just buy that, put it on bricks? Do you know what I mean? Like not not even take it out of the car, like park the car up and use it to run your house. Whereas a Tesla battery, any of the other batteries that are on the market, they're tiny sizes in comparison to even the smallest car battery, but they're really expensive. Well, a household battery is five times more than an EV battery. Um, this is reneweconomy.com.au website talking about this. The ha- household battery, five times the cost of an EV battery. If you do it in installed Aussie dollars per kilowatt hour, uh, residential batteries, they say, should be able to get economies of scale. Even though the absolute cost is always likely to be higher because of the inverter and installation costs, they should both be moving down the cost curve at a pretty good rate. But the auto side has gone down. The residential side, battery cost inside your your garage at home, under your stairs or something, hasn't gone down as quick as car batteries. It's all the same cells, isn't it? I mean, (laughs) sort of. It's all the same stuff sort of inverters and things let's talk about another story and great news story today the european passenger plug-in vehicle market scored thirty-seven thousand registrations in april that means it grew 30 percent compared to the same period last year a good performance considering that the overall market 
was down in April, and yet, Clean Technica said, fully electric vehicles jumped 70, yeah, 70, 70% year on year to 24,000 deliveries. 65% of all plug in sales are full electric. Let's move on to a company we talk about a lot on the podcast. I'm not obsessed, but I always like to give due credit because otherwise I think China would be sometimes, sometimes forgotten in the world of EVs, and they really are. Pushing? Pulling? Pushing us forward? Pulling us along with them? Anyway, make your own mind up. Uh, Shunday is one of at least 20 electric-centric versions of Detroit. Shunday is a town or a city in China, but there are 20 whole towns focused entirely on one thing, making electric cars. Uh, it's their version, like I say, of Detroit. China is going all in on a technology projected to sell in record numbers this year. Uh, President Xi Jinping wants the nation's 500 EV makers to be magnets for ancillary industries as well as he pushes to build a manufacturing superpower by 2025, says Bloomberg today. Now, Bloomberg says the amount of investment committed to the developing EV towns is 209 billion yuan. That's about 30 billion. <laughs> Numbers are staggering. $30 billion so far, according to Bloomberg calculations. I'll put a link in the show notes if you want to read more. Lyft. You know, you've heard of Uber, but if you, you know, maybe you haven't heard of, of uh, ride-hailing apps, Lyft, L-Y-F-T, it might have a way to recruit some more drivers now, topping up their cars on us. No, on Lyft, not you and I. Uh, the ride-sharing service has teamed up with the Portland General Electric to offer free EV charging in the Oregon City metro area to el eligible drivers. Starts in April, got an EV, says Engadget, work for Lyft, free charging's on its way. I'll pop a link in the show notes if you want to read more. Okay, right, now, two final stories, and this is all about catching the bad guys, bad girls as well, uh, with electric police cars. We'll start down under. In Aussie, Victoria police have taken the first steps in what could be a big development in police vehicles since they first started driving them 100 years ago. It's one of the first in the world to drive, you guessed it, I let you fill in the blanks sometimes, on electric. I found this on the official police website, but thank you to everyone that forwarded it on. I had more than one person send me this story on police.vic.gov.au. From today, Victoria Police's Road Policing Command are going to be using a Tesla Model X in highway patrol, so you won't be escaping that one anytime soon. Uh, they purchased the uh, five-door, five-seat SUV. It's in a five-seat configuration. Not what, didn't go for the seven-seater. <laughs> Probably got some police stuff to put in the back as part of a feasibility study. And then I go from Australia to Switzerland. Swiss police are purchasing not one but 13. The Cantonal police of St. Gallen in Switzerland have bought 13 Konas. I wonder how long they had to wait for them, because the rest of us are on a 12-month waiting list for the Kona, at least here in the UK. Do you think if you're the Swiss police, you call up uh, the uh, the headquarters in Korea and go, uh, can we get some of those? I wonder if you get bumped up the list a little bit. Uh, five are going to be in patrol colours. Eight are going to be in civilian models. For general services, uh, says Inside EVs. According to Hyundai, the Kona Electric was the only model that fulfilled the requirements of the power, the price, the availability, things like that. So they went for the Hyundai Kona. Lovely. Hey, thank you very much to everyone who sends me stories, by the way. I really appreciate it. Maybe uh, if you are coming along to Fully Charged Live this weekend, I'll get to see you and buy you a posh coffee as a way of saying thank you for basically doing the prep for me. Let's move on to our questioner of the week this week. Thanks to myev.com, setting a brand new question of the week. As EVs get more popular, and we talk about it all the time on this show. Should EVs still qualify for special treatment and incentives, like financial incentives, convenience, like driving in bus lanes or free parking, or not? Should EVs qualify, and why? Thank you very much for everyone who sent me answers so far. Keep yours coming in. Go to uh, Facebook and YouTube. Email me, hello, at evnewsdaily.com. Well, there are 216 patrons. Oh, no, there's more. I've got a couple more. I've got to say your names tomorrow. Uh, you know who you are. On the podcast, thank you for supporting on Patreon. If you want to get any of the previous shows, you can do online 489 of those and get new ones first and free and automatically by hitting subscribe in your podcast app or on YouTube. Say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. In the meantime, have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>